Good afternoon, all, and welcome to Calvert's Corner for this special live stream for the Atlantean University. I am Lord Calvert Geiler, painting the Meridian Cross, painting the Argent Comet, painting the Compostela and Reaper, coming to you live from the Barony of the Osprey on the southern coast of Meridians. Now, I'd like to start out with thanking the folks from Atlantean University and the staff and, uh, and Chancellor from, from, that, uh, from, from Atlantean U for it, uh, allowing me to come out and teach today, uh, virtually, you know, come out virtually here. Uh, and of course, thank you all for joining me for this class. A um, little uh, introduction about what this class is going to be. So this is a sort of very introductory level. Uh, so one of the things we're working on here in Meridiers recently is some uh, orientation level courses for some newer heralds. So this class may be a little uh, towards that end. Uh, just FYI, I want to get that out there. <clears throat> it's also going to be relatively short uh, in content, but we can sort of have some discussions and I'll answer questions as they come up. Uh, so a couple of bookkeeping things. If you are here from Atlantean U, uh, make sure I, I will not be taking role during this class because it's I can't actually see who's watching other than in the comments. Uh, so please uh, make sure you go back to the Atlantean University website where you initially registered and uh, click that you attended uh, to get credit there. Uh, if you're coming to hear this not from Atlantean U, just from Calvary's Corner, uh, feel free to reach out to me and I'll make sure you get credit for the Royal University of Meridiers. Uh, I can uh, give you credit for that side as well. Uh, we'll make sure you at least get credit for attending today or you feel free to just hang out and watch. All right, so uh, what else, what else, what else? I think that's it. So let's do some, some little introductions and then we'll get on with the actual course. So uh, oh, feel free to make sure you say hello in the comments or in the chat, depending on where you're watching. Let me know who you are, where you're from, uh, and you know, just uh, ask questions throughout and I'll be happy to answer them. So, so devices and badges, what are they? And as, uh, as my good buddy Fikin says, badges, we don't need no freaking badges, but in fact, we do, sir. We do need freaking badges. And we'll discuss why we need freaking badges here momentarily. First of all, uh, so as I said, I'm Lord Calberger. Uh, I'm from the Barony of the Osprey in Meridiers, which uh, if you're not familiar with the geography of Meridiers, it's that little point uh, at the very bottom, uh, excuse, I guess, southwest corner of Meridiers that is just between Glen Altman and Tramiris, right on the coast. Uh, so you can find me somewhere in that little region down there. Uh, I am currently the Lantern Herald for the Kingdom, which is, which is the uh, Herald for Education uh, within our uh, college. Uh, I also serve as the Dean of Heraldic Studies for the Royal University of Meridiers, of uh, which I hold a lecturer's degree from that university as well. Uh, that's enough about me. On to the fun stuff. So, devices. Uh, so, this, this class has two sections. Uh, we're going to talk about devices. We'll talk about badges. And then we'll do a little bit of what ifs. Uh, most of this information I have pulled directly from the uh, assorted lessons in heraldry from heraldry.sca.org. Um, so feel free to look that up. I've got the links directly here at the end of this slide or in these slides. Uh, I've sort of compiled a couple of things from either the glossary or from um, the assorted lessons section, which if you haven't done so, please go look at that heraldry.sca.org. Uh, there are rules, there are lessons, there are articles. It is an amazing source of information. Uh, the Art Society Herald have done it. just a fantastic job putting it together. Uh, go out there, go bookmark that, and use it frequently. So, devices. What are they? So a device is a heraldic design that uniquely represents the person or group that owns it. Now, that's, that's a very short definition from the, the glossary. I, I will continue uh, with a little bit, because uh, this is a question that comes up between what is the difference between a device and arms. A person who has not yet been awarded arms may register personal armory as a device. The device automatically becomes arms when the person receives an award of arms, grant of arms, or patent of arms. However, this distinction is not actually tracked in the College of Heralds, uh, and most of us just call them devices. It is a, if it is your personal heraldry, it is a device. Uh, so a couple of rules about that. Devices must have a feel, uh, or so they have to have a base color, a base layer, uh, uh, something on the back. The background has to exist, and we'll get into the distinction on that on badges. Uh, you're only allowed to register one device per person uh, or per group, um, and it must be unique. Now, the rules for uniqueness and uh, what you know, uh, how to register a device and all that, that's, that's a much separate course. Um, but it must be unique and follow sort of the rules of uh, for determining uniqueness that the, that the society has determined. There are also a couple of distinctions between personal and group devices, um, mainly the laurel wreath that gets added for a group. Um, but again, that's sort of a, a thing there. But again, one device per group or person. Now, 
Um, this is uh, there is a, a caveat to that in the uh, sort of, the, sort of the, uh, the glossary as well. Um, only one device potentially with an augmentation may be registered. Um, so you may also you may occasionally see two devices register where there's a device in the device with augmentation. That's a sort of an edge case higher level thing. We're not going to really get into uh, augmentations in this one. Um, so when can a device be used or flown? That's that's the important part. Right? So, we, so we, we have we define what a device is. What can it be used for? If it is a personal device, it should only be flown when the owner of that device is present. So if it is your device, it should fly at an event or a camp when you are present. Now, uh, I want to sort of discuss the word present for a moment. Um, on the screen. Present is a weird thing. So if you're present in a castle and you step out into the gardens for a few minutes outside of the walls, you're still present in the castle. If you leave for multiple days, then your flag should come down. So if you're at a war and you're in your camp and you have your device up, well, just because you happen to go down to the Green Dragon and you're not in your camp anymore, you shouldn't also go run your take your flag down. That, that would just be tedious and silly. You are still present at the war. Uh, now, you could use that as an interesting indicator of, yes, I'm in camp, or no, I'm not, um, as long as you are paying attention or have someone paying attention to that. I think this is a really, really, really neat thing to do for uh, a baronial thing or a cornet thing uh, to show when the crown is in the camp versus not the camp, uh, but it would require somebody sort of paying attention to it, um, which we all get uh, very busy at wars and things, so it might be a little difficult. Speaking of group, uh, so this is group when there's a barony or a principality or a kingdom, so a, a group with a, uh, with a figurehead, king, prince, or baron. The device should only be flown or displayed when that coronet is present. So if the crown is not there, then the, the kingdom arms should not be flown. We have other flags for that. We have other badges for that. We have other things you could fly. Uh, the arm shall be flown if the coronet is in is in residence. Um, same thing with baronies. Uh, if there if there is a, a pointy hat figurehead, that matters. For a non baronial group or a non coronet bearing group, it shall only be when the seneschal is present. The seneschal uh, acts as the head of that of that group, and they are the highest ranking member, so to speak, in that in that group within our organization. Um, so then you should only have that device flying when they are present. So that's really a great way to look at it is who is this representing or what is it representing? And then if it's a what, who is representing that what? So if it's a who, when that person exists and they're at that thing, fly that device. If it's a, if it's a what, if it's a group, who is a representative of that group? King, king, queen, prince, princess, um, baron, baroness, or seneschal, whichever of those exist that is the sort of the highest of that group. Um, now, within the, uh, if you have a, a crown and a, a king and a prince, the prince and princess have their own arms. So they would so they would fly those separately from the, from the king and queen. But same rules apply. Now, as my buddy Fiken mentioned, badges. We don't need no freaking badges, but we do, because devices don't allow you to do a whole lot with them. Uh, they are very singular use objects. They are to show I am here and this is me. We use badges for a lot more than that in the SCA. Uh, and it's because frankly, they're, they're less restricted and they're intended to be so. So if a device is showing me, a badge shows mine or some affiliation. Uh, we're not denoting property per se, uh, but it does show an affiliation to those things. So what is a badge? My slide is in. There you go. All right, so a badge is a piece of armory used by an individual or group to identify retainers, members, possessions, or items. So while a device is used solely to identify or mark its owner, or on the owner's heraldic tabard or other personal possessions, a badge may be used by anyone the owner allows to use it. Now, uh, a caveat that's, that's added in the uh, description is that badges of orders and awards are restricted to members of those orders. Um, so obviously like the Herald's badge uh, is restricted to Herald's or used for Herald's. Um, or if you notice in my background, 
um, these badges along here are denoting my awards. So these are, you know, so I'm using these badges because I have been awarded those things. Um, so uh, it's a bit of a sort of a, a caveat to that. All right, so what's the differences? So, so it's, it's a, any piece of armory used by an individual or group. Uh, it is a badges are submitted on squares instead of the shield shapes. That, that's a weird from a submission perspective. Um, if you look at these badge submission form, they're submitted on a square shape uh, versus the shield. But devices and badges can be displayed on literally anything. So that's sort of a, only a submitting distinction. Um, but badges can be fieldless, which means they have no background, but all the charges must touch. Um, the way I describe this is if you're describing a fieldless badge, it has to have be something you could cast out of metal or that is a singular object that if it was, you know, if you were to make it a three-dimensional thing of it, it would be one thing with no connecting pieces. It, it is one thing touching. Um, and we'll get into an example of that in a moment here. Um, now, fieldless badges do get a special allowance when you're talking about registering them uh, to, uh, to make them a little easier. Basically, they get one free difference uh, or clear difference uh, for being fieldless. Um, and uh, the other special caveat is individuals and groups may have multiple badges. Now, it is important as to who owns the badge. So within, uh, and then there is a limit. I think it's 10, uh, any, any, any one person can have 10 heraldic things. Uh, I don't think groups have that restriction uh, within the society. Um, so badges will get used for uh, quite a few different things like that, uh, you know, like within, within awards or within kingdoms. We have populous badges and we have award badges. But on a personal level, you can use them for you know, as a, as a peer, denoting your your apprentices or your associates or your household. Um, so they wouldn't be wearing your personal arms, they'd be wearing your household badge or your badge. Um, now, I know some of the knights make an exception to this on the uh, the lineage belts where it has the, the devices of the lineage of that knighthood. And that's fine. You're allowed to do that. Uh, it is not technically heraldically proper uh, but by tradition, that is something we do. Uh, at least I, I've seen here, it's fairly common here in Meridian. So, you know, again, a lot of these rules are your mileage may vary. Uh, these are suggestions for how they should be used. Uh, in that case, it's more of a, uh, that person wore that belt, therefore their device went on that belt when they wore it. Sure, I can I can track with that. Um, but if you were wearing a, like your knight's device on your belt, that would not necessarily be proper. All right, so... What are badges used, or, or which, where should a badge be used, flown, or displayed? All the things. Basically, if it's not if it's not a thing that a device would be used for, use a badge. Awards, group memberships, affiliations, alliances, uh, herald, you know, so offices like a, like Herald, Seneschal, Exchequer, those offices. Um, any household you're part of, guilds, um, dance troops, comedy groups. In insert group here. Um, now, alternate personas may also use badges as their device. So I know um, uh, Master Matthias here in Meridies has a, his fighting persona is Japanese. And he, because Japanese heraldry doesn't really work within our heraldic customs, at least it doesn't currently, and they're being worked on, uh, it's much easier to register a badge that more matches the Japanese Mon style. Uh, so he did that. So when he fights, he carries his, his Japanese Mon badge as his device, um, but then but his master Matthias persona has his primary device that is his registered device. So uh, that's where it is. If you have a, a Mongol or a, a Norse or a Asian persona, badges will be a lot easier to sort of register for that style you're looking for. Um, that's not to say that devices cannot be registered. They don't fit that thing. I don't fit that style. Uh, it's sometimes it's a little more difficult. Um, now, some badges do have restrictions. So as I mentioned, awards are restricted to the people who have those awards or orders. Um, offices are meant to be held for a certain time. So while you're acting as the exchequer, you carry the exchequer's badge or the Seneschal, you carry the Seneschal's badge. Um, when you step down from that office, you no longer have rights to that badge. I actually saw this discussion fairly recently. Um, I was putting together a, uh, like an achievement and they were wanting to put the past, person's past offices on it. And sure, nobody's going to tell them, nobody's going to stop them doing that, but it's actually not entirely proper because that person is no longer holding those those offices and that badge is for that current office holder.
questions so far? Anything? I mean, you guys are very quiet. Oh, I see people saying hello out there. Today. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Let's see, we have some, let's see, Glenn Alban, Atlantia, Edelmere, another Atlantia, Ethel Mark. Nice, nice. Just gonna have to scroll back through here, catch up on comments. Excellent. I always love, uh, one of the things I love about doing uh, these virtual universities is, is getting people from four or five or six different kingdoms in a singular room. It's always fun. All right, so as I mentioned, this is going to be a super, sort of, super short lesson, super short thing, but we do have some what ifs. Uh, and I want to thank, um, this is pulled directly from, I didn't write this. I, I scripted some of those first parts. Uh, I sort of took some bits and sort of pieced them together. Uh, this next part is directly from the Assorted Lessons of Heraldry, uh, Lesson 13, Devices versus Badges. Um, this is the what if section, or try your hand at some exercises, is what it's called in that. Um, let's do a couple of what ifs. Um, and, and I'll try to delay. I, there's an unfortunate delay between the live stream and the comments sometimes, so it's tough for me to uh, sort of wait on responses on this without it being uh, a super long delay. Um, but feel free to answer in the comments. And, uh, We'll, uh, we'll see who gets them right and who, who can uh, get these or not. So the first one is, the Seneschal, the Barony of Sacred Ford, arrives at an event and sets up their pavilion. They hang a banner with the arms of Sacred Ford from a pole. Is this okay? Well, uh, I'll give it a minute. Uh, let's consider on that. I'll answer questions. Let's see. Uh, Fikin says, you mentioned the badges are appropriate to awards. Would those be just reserved for badges, or is there a way to personal badges household would be included on an award? You mentioned badges appropriate to awards. Would those be just for the reserved badges, or is there a way personal badges slash household badges should be included, would be included on an award? Fikin, I don't understand your question. Can you re-ask that? I don't get what you're asking there. I, th I think I know, but I don't want to answer the wrong question there. All right, so uh, if I can, if you will follow up with me on that, uh, and I'll catch up on that. So, uh, should the Seneschal, the Barry of Sacred Forward, set up a pole in their pavilion? Maybe. Only if the Baron or Baroness is present and, st and staying in that pavilion. So, in this case, the Seneschal of the Barony of Sacred Forward should not display the device on their own because they are the Seneschal of a barony, therefore they have a ranking figurehead. If it was the Seneschal of a local shire, then yes, they could. All right. A household wishes to register a badge. Their proposed badge is three tankards of ale argent. Is this registrable? Ignoring any possible conflicts, obviously. So uh, I'll give you a hint. There's a key word missing out of this blazon that would make it very obvious. Uh, but if anybody who knows who knows uh, uh, blazons would, would should pick up on this fairly quickly. All right. So the answer is no. Uh, so this is what the actual proper blazon for this would be: fieldless, three tankards of ale argent. Um, so it is basically, the, when it says three tankards, it is tankard, tankard, tankard. Uh, they are not touching, they are not connected, and they cannot be fieldless. Uh, so yeah, the word fieldless is missing from the blazon, which is, would make it a little more obvious than that. Um, so no, that is not proper because it, they are not connected. The Shire of Ponta Basso does not have a badge registered. Instead, the populace display the arms without the laurel wreath. Is this okay? Take a moment. So, is it? It is not. Uh, so, and, and this actually sort of a, bridges into a bit of a rabbit hole. Um, any a device or badge or any set of thing that is a registered object should not be altered in its display. Caveat. It should not be altered in a way that makes it different. So if you want to change it to a, uh, you know, a, a, a different styled bear, as long as it's still a bear, that's fine. If you want to, you know, make the color 
a little pink versus versus dark red. Sure, that's fine. Like you know, there's there, what we call artistic licensing. Fine. Um, in this case, removing the wreath is would be improper because you're actually changing the device. Secondly, uh, because there is no badge, there is actually no registered army that this group can use outside of their seneschal. Uh, so it's a shire, so which means only the seneschal should be displaying that device as the ranking member. Um, so they would need to the group would need to formally register a, a populist badge uh, for use. This is actually the one that we see that I see most commonly being, I think, uh, done incorrectly is seeing groups displaying their baronial arms or, or group arms on like stickers or, or cars, things like that, uh, on coffee mugs, whatnot. Um, and whereas, again, there's, as I mentioned in my first class this morning, they're not heraldic place. Somebody's going to come around and take away your birthday. But if we're, if we're trying to do things correctly, it would be incorrect. All right, the newly knighted Sir Red, Rudolph, um, this is Rudolph the Red, clearly, uh, is gathering his household together. He provides tabards for his squires that bear his arms. Is it okay for his squires to wear these tabards? So this is Sir Rudolph gathering his household and giving his squires tabards with his arms on them. Give me a moment. Unfortunately, the newly knighted Sir Rudolph has made a mistake. Uh, it is improper. Uh, so Sir, only Sir Rudolph should bear his personal arms. He should register a badge for his squires to wear either a badge for himself or a badge for his household. Um, now, the exception to this is for Sir Rudolph's sons could bear his arms with a mark of cadency. Um, or when Sir Rudolph passes, he could will his arms onto someone else, but then they become the property of that other person, and thus the rules still apply. Lady Anne wishes to register her arms. Two needles crossed in saltier argent over a spool of thread ghouls. What will happen to this submission? Uh, so this is uh, a f intended to be, again, fieldless, a fieldless badge, because there is no field at the beginning. Um, um, and that's part of the answer, actually. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and answer this one, because this, this is a little weird one. Uh, so so this, this device would be returned, um, mostly because it is a poor style for a fieldless badge. Um, it, it, it's... <sighs> Too much stack, too much going on, uh, and yeah, as far as they will probably return for clarification. Um, but also, it's not appropriate for a device that must have a shield. Uh, so it, it specifies that she wants to register this as her arms, and it has no has no feel. So that's that's problem A. And then as a badge, it's sort of willy. It's sort of uh, a little chaos to do. Um, so we'd probably get returned both directions. All right, and last but not least here. At the Bronial encampment of Bright Mountain, their excellencies have the Bronial arms on a flagpole. When should the arms be flying, and when should they be taken down? Uh, if you're paying attention, I sort of gave you the answer to this one earlier on in the course. So, in the Bronial encampment, if the Baroness or Baron or Baroness is in camp, the arms should be flying. If not, they should be taken down. Now, uh, if you wanted to have a singular uh, flag up throughout the event, uh, a standard or a, a, a flag bearing the badge of the barony, the populist badge of the barony, could be left flying at all times. But if the, if the, if you want to be proper, again, we're talking proper here, uh, then every time the baron, baroness, uh, king, queen, whatever, let, leaves the encampment, then that technically the arm should come down and go with them to their next location. Uh, we don't see this a whole lot because it just becomes tedious, especially depending on how we're how we're raising and lowering these sort of flags. Um, we don't have uh, the extra hundred retainers around to to help us get those down. Uh, but it, something to look at when you're when you're looking at your holding display is if you're with a household uh, or a uh, group, make sure you have a badge register, make sure you have a, a populous badge register, and use that as your display, and allow your cornet or your seneschal to sort of bear that. Uh, that thing. Okay. 
Um, can you explain if households are a thing? I yes, households are a thing. Um, I'm gonna okay. I, I'll try to answer that question. I'm not sure where you're going with this, but uh, so households have badges. Okay, so within within the SCA, we have um, every any person can be part of a household. Um, they are unofficial groups within the SCA. So we have the official groups are your cantons, shires, baronies, principalities, kingdoms. Those official designations. Um, households are unofficial. So the SCA does not recognize them in any way, um, other than the heraldic office recognizes them in that we allow them to register badges, but those badges are generally registered to a person as the head of that household. Um, they can be both peerage-based and non-peerage-based, um, so they're led by a, a knight, pelican, or other, other peer type, uh, or non-peerage-based uh, mercenary camps, uh, those sort of things that are just groups of people, um, and th they can register badges. So. Um, with the, I'm sorry, the Shadow Legion is a good example. Um, Black Company is a good example out of the West. These are these are households that are mercenaries that have a badge they've registered for them all to wear. Um, you'll see this a lot more at wars, a lot more in those sort of contexts where those households matter more. Uh, and, that, and that's very kingdom specific. Uh, so some kingdoms have more households than others. I know uh, Calenteer is very kingdom focused, not very household focused. Meridius is, has a lot of households. So. All right, so there you go. So uh, that's what I've got. Uh, 30 minutes, about what I expected to be. Uh, give me, let me do the quick reference sheet here. So this came from heraldry.sca.org. There is a what is a device article and a what is a badge article uh, and, and definitions in the glossary. Um, heraldry.sca.org slash COA gloss and sca.org slash armory slash lessons slash lesson 13 specifically is when I pulled that list from and some of the other information I had. Uh, thank you to the people who wrote those articles um, and edited them and sort of maintained those articles. Um, we have a super great College of Heralds within the SCA and I, I appreciate them for all the work they do on their side. Uh, a little bit about where you can find me. Let me get to the next slide. Uh, so obviously Calabar's Corner. Uh, make sure to like, subscribe, uh, like, like this video, subscribe to this channel for more from Calabar's Corner. Uh, you games and heraldry and uh, Scythian stuff and, and some opinion-based talk shows. So feel free to subscribe and check me out. Uh, also on Facebook, facebook.com backslash Calabar's Corner. I can be reached at calabar.geiler. And yes, my name is misspelled in that email. It's fine. It still works at gmail.com. Uh, or you can reach me actually at lantern at meridies.org. That is my current official email address for the my office. A um, bit of a personal or a bit of a plug for that. Uh, July 14th, we'll be running the Royal University of Meridies, um, and I'll be running the heraldic track for that. So if you're interested in teaching a heraldic class or learning more about heraldry, check us out with that. You can find us on the Kingdom of Meridies Facebook page. We'll have an event up soon. Uh, also, from a, a Calvary's Corner perspective, if you'd like to support Calvary's Corner and the like nine, ten other channels we support, Look us up on Patreon, patreon.com backslash KK Productions. Um, some great rewards out there, just some fun stuff you can pick up from our Patreon. Uh, and that's it. So, so, yeah, devices and badges. I think uh, one of the things that I know, my sort of purpose of me of this class is sort of defining the two um, and what device versus arms and the device versus badge. Um, again, there's no heroic police. Somebody's going to come take away your, your banners or rip, or rip your standards down. Um, one of the things we want to do as heralds and, and as people working with heraldry is to encourage proper use and better use. Um, heralds get a bad rap for being rules lawyers, um, and we are to, a, to an extent. Um, but I think one of the things we can do as heralds is to, to, to understand what, what you can do, what you shouldn't do, and how you can do something better um, so we can improve how we do display. Oh, man. All right. Any further questions? I'll give you just another minute here before I sign off. Let me scroll back and make sure I didn't miss anything. Badges, yay badges. Uh, oh, Mr. Glen Alban. Hey, Glen Alban. Well, welcome, Glen Alban. There we go. Didn't see that one earlier. There we go. Um, I never saw Fiken re ask his question, so I'll uh, I'll have to follow him about that afterwards. But uh, see your oh, I've got a uh, hold. On, I've got a private message. Ah, uh, hold on. Let me look this up. All right. Do they just put the reserve badge on an award, or are there ways to ensure a personal household badge would be featured? 
Oh, yeah, I think you're, you're talking for like an award scroll or something like that. Okay, so, uh, okay, so award badges like you know, like these um, you know, award badges um, are meant to denote the the award was given and are used in different ways. So, uh, with the Meridiates, and this this is uh, your sumptuary laws may vary. Um, we have uh, each of our awards has a registered badge and generally has some sort of common regalia that is given with that badge on it in some way. Um, so when the badge, when the, sorry, when the award is given, the regalia generally is only gonna feature the badge of that award or that order, but uh, a scroll you're given could have your badges, your award badges, some symbols of the two, some art of them that, 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 that all tracks. Uh, or again, if you're sort of making your own regalia, uh, using using the badges or some you know of them in ways that are not necessarily the ways the regalia normally looks. Um, my argent uh, my argent comet, for example, this is not the typical argent comet appearance, um, but this is the typical Meridian cross. So, um, but these are not the regalia given out necessarily in court. Um, uh, Compostela is another good example, or the the, the seashell. We have recently changed the badge on that one, so it's a a little different. So I hope that answers your question, Viking. Um, but I think the, the short version, actually, of that is use badges however you want to. Uh, badges are, un, are, you know, other than the ones that are restricted, badges are unrestricted. So register badges, register multiple badges. Feel free to use them for different things. If you have multiple personas, register multiple badges and use them to denote what persona you're doing that day. So. All right. I want to thank all of you for tuning in. Uh, sorry, this is a relatively short class. Make sure you subscribe for more content uh, and, and look me up for future classes. I uh, would love to have you back for another course. If you have a course you'd like to need to teach, feel free to reach out. I'd love to have requests and see, or see what people need. Um, I'll also be launching a Lantern uh, specific YouTube page. It's actually already up, but I haven't fully launched it yet. Um, where we're going to be doing some more orientation level things and sort of building out some uh, like one-on-one level courses to help uh, new heralds. So, Look for that coming soon. Keep an eye on the Kingdom of Meridia's Facebook page for that. Uh, again, thank you all for joining me. This has been Calbar in Calbar's Corner. Have a good day, everybody.